No, but the the top 100. So it was Lauren Hill at number one, Billy Jean at number two, or Thriller. No, it was the album Thriller at number two, Beatles Albi- Abbey Road at three. I think it was Prince's Purple Rain Purple at four. Rain was four yeah. Um, and didn't I guess those? You guessed Lauren Hill at one. I was impressed. I, I guessed all four, just not in the right order. Yeah, yeah, you did. I had Beatles at two. You did. I had Beatles at two. I was, I was, sh- I, I mean, that album is, is really freaking good. Don't get me wrong, but I was shocked it was number one over Thriller. Beat uh, Lauren Hill. Lauren, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you have to look at it from the position of all of the different variables they viewed it through. Right? It's fair. So if you look at it. No, I and again, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe there's a single album that won more Grammys. No, I think you're right. And they, and when they say they, she, yeah, just her, <laughs> it was her. Mm-hmm. So you look at that and you see how little help was given and how much she accomplished through doing it. That's the definition of the goat, in my opinion. It's, yeah. it's, it's why people are like, well, MJ didn't win without Pippin. It's like, oh, well. Guess what? If you're the only one on the team and you won 12, 12 Grammys, yeah, so it was twelve or eleven. I th- they were because they anything they did over the ten is just phenomenal. Yeah, all on anything one album. Over five on one album is ridiculous. I just didn't know how good of a guitar player she was either, and Her she was the first inclination. The first she was one of the first play or people to do the MTV Unplugged, right? I you, I think she was. I think she was like one of the first, but she was badass. This is she was in, just playing guitar. Nora Jones, how many Grammys did she get? Was Nora it? Jones is. Do you remember her album, Nora Jones' yeah. album? Nora Jones, Nora Jones had some See. heat. I don't I mean, remember a single song. I just remember Nora Jones. Grammy. You just remember like how good she is, or like how good her songs. I were just too. remember that one album. Oh yep, okay. So she won nine. Nora Jones won nine. Mm-hmm. What was Lauren Hill eleven? Uh, hold on, hold on. She has nine nine Grammys, eighteen nominations. Let's see, what's True. Lauren Lauren Hill? Well, I mean, it's not even fair because she's like one for one, Lauren Hill. Yeah, literally just <laughs> one and done album. She has one album, album. right? That's right. not live. Yeah, it's, it's, the live albums are where it's at too, like live music. But we need to do more live music. We do on the that, body. That one was pretty fun when we did a live music podcast. And it was Mark, Mark Ferrari. You you might have remembered Mark. He was a Bethel Park teacher. Plays not plays well. music now. Phys ed teacher, right? Yeah, gym oh, teacher. Yeah, no, I he was mad. killer. We're I'm like, an old man. Bro. Yeah. We're like, could you uh, play us a song real quick? <laughs> and just out of nowhere, we sang a song at what, like 11 a.m. No warm up. Yeah, just, just ripped sound, it. Like, it. Sounded amazing. It pretty, yeah, he was, he was a really good. He was a really good guitar player. Yeah. Like his guitar playing was was yeah. legit. It was legit. Yeah. I was like, should I like try something? But I'm like, yeah, not after that. Kind of <laughs> that's just be stupid. You still play the guitar? Comparison is Practice. a drunk Alex. guitar, drunk yeah. guitarist. Yeah. Oh, you're the guy at the campfire every time. Oh, I just guess so. learned a new song. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bro. <laughs> we don't need to hear that today. <laughs> every now and then, you can't do it too often. You just gotta be like Spring selective it out about for special it. Special occasion. You don't want to be the guy that's always like, "Here's Wonderwall. Like, let me play it." Yeah. <laughs> Finding reasons to to play. Is, oh. I'm gonna crack this beer though. Episode what? Thirty nine. Thirty nine. All right, I'll go first. You gotta rate the crack. That was a nice That was one. a good one with that one was, hand. I'll give that an eight. Oh, I hear a train. Oh, I oh, got that, a two. Oh, you, you got, lost it. You, you lost yeah, it. you lost oh, it. Oh, no. <laughs> Dang. That was good. I'll give that an 8.3. Oh. Yeah, good recovery. That. Good recovery. That right. I think his was closer to the mic. That was really why we got it. Oh, yeah. Good. I always I always put it like Cheers. Right I got some tea, Cheers. Boys. Cheers. Cheers. To Stonies, man. Can't Cheers. do it without the sponsor. Cheers to Stonies. Yes, sir. Another nature pod for you too. Out back, in the back deck, sunset. Oh, this is, the vibes are immaculate. Oh yeah. You got the shade. I'm gonna get a nice tan on one side. Right <laughs> side of the face. I feel like the outside podcast always just, just way more chill. Way more chill. They look. They just have like a different vibe to them. Yeah. I think. I think everybody's more relaxed, honestly, than doing it in like a studio setting. Yeah, this one beats the studio when we did it. The what was that episode three? We had it was like our, on. one of our very first episodes, uh-huh. really about two years ago. Is that long? Holy two God. years had to be right. At least were, I was. I was still in school. Popa was still there. 
Pebble yeah. was still there. I remember the coolest part about that was the setup and just how far you guys came from concept to sit down. And now you look back and you're on 39 where it's like, oh, shit, we're really doing this. Yeah. It's cool. Right. It's just cool. we started with one mic in the middle of the table <laughs> in some random room at Westminster. And then we were like, oh, check out the studio to this. You know so. the, the key word in that? started started that's my favorite thing when people talk is like just start and then we'll sit down 39 episodes later it's cool like i i respect that with what you guys did a lot of people just talk and talk and, and myself you know as i've been talking about the podcast well let me rephrase i did beat you guys to it but mine was only you did audio yeah i, I this was before video this was before short what do they call this now? Short, short form. Short form video. Like yeah. interviews or long form, long form mm -hmm. videos. Like no one was really doing that. Joe Rogan was the first. This was 2016. So you figure a long time ago. Um, you started the car talks originally. I feel like that was the oh, OG conception wow. of Jared I, Zeke talks. Was I stumbled the car upon talks. those one day randomly. I forget where. And I was like, that was, good. That was that's a flashback from the past because that was whenever we had the 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 printing shop was whenever you did the car talks hold on no shout out my little bro anth anth couldn't have been more than i had the lexus so right. this was probably 2012 anth my little brother anth was be in the car with a little camera and he'd be like i'll film you bro and i'll take him to the gym and he'd be asking me questions and the craziest part is i'll find that clip and send it to you guys the stuff that i said in that video I've heard myself say five years later, 10 years later, <laughs> 12 years later, where I'm like, okay, consistency is key. So instead of flip-flopping, if you really stand on the things you say, you have a resume that looks to fit that. It's neat. It's just like you guys. Like You start, and then you keep stacking and stacking, and you look back, and you're like, damn, we built something. Yeah. You don't know what it is because you had no real plan of what it could become, but that's why it could grow. You didn't box it. People have an idea, and before they start, they have this preconceived notion of what it could be or should be, and it can't be anything else. I get stuck in that situation. You meet somebody new. Oh, this is who they are. It's like, no. Be open to being surprised and amazed by people and ideas. If you keep your imagination clear it can become something so much greater than you even expected, but people can't do that now. You know, we want to be this because we consume this. Mm -hmm. You can do and be anything. Don't box yourself anyway. I'll people, people force <laughs> it. No, people force shit. And like, that's what our whole thing with this was is literally, it's like, let's have a podcast outside and talk about anything and everything. Because as soon as you start to force stuff, it, doesn't come off genuine and it's at the end of the day it's not who we are either you know that's a lot who the the initial car talks were too like what what was the what was the initial spark was it literally just like interview it was you and anth like just bsing or was it you had a certain thing that you wanted to talk about no to be honest i was at a stage in my life i was i dropped out of school and a lot of people that i was cool with went to school with maybe wasn't cool with. just people my age were close to where you, well actually you guys are further i was it was like 23 you know you're coming out of college you're making a little bit of money and i was just in this mindset like i'm just scratching the surface and a lot of these people were acting as though they made it you know like oh, i bought my three series and look no slight to them my goals were just different but a lot of times it's what we said. I, I thought that a lot of people around me were settling and they were 23, 24, 25. And, you know, backstory of my, myself, like two years later, I left a seven year relationship because I was just like, oh, I'm settling. And it no slight, beautiful girl, beautiful relationship, awesome. I couldn't be who I was. But if you become a better person, when you let something go, you knew it was wrong. And that's where I was like, okay, it was the, the hardest decision I made at the time ever in my life, but it was one of those things you step away. So I had to stand on my own shit. And a lot of times, like you guys go on my Instagram page, I say stuff and I say that stuff because I need to stand on what I say. I need to back up what I say or else I'm another critic with no credentials. And look, if you go and look at the last 15 years of my work, if you look at 15 years of my life, I get to a certain point and I get bored. I really get bored because the challenge is over. 
right? But I'll stand on that and say I'm gonna do it no matter how hard the challenge is. But when it comes full circle, it's like when you're done, you're done. Yeah. And when you know you're done, it's time to walk away and let that go on and you get to the next thing. I don't does know. it does it get any easier? Like you you brought up like the first time is like you got to step away to improve upon it. But does it get easier to do it? Like the more that more that it happens in life. The hardest thing to do is stepping away from the external love to give it back to yourself. It's the hardest thing in the world. And and I pray if anybody really really knows me, they understand how my heart bleeds for others. But there are times and in my life, it, you know, some people really actually know what I've gone through in the last year and what I'm going through now physically. And it's sorry I disappeared, but I got to worry about myself. And a lot of times people don't understand that. Um, and that's why, you know, you can't have a big circle because they think you're there for them. No actuality. You got if you're blessed. Right. I'm 35. If you're blessed, you got a handful of friends that you can count on at 35 I don't want more I really don't I got a lot of acquaintances I got a lot of people I do love but I only got a few people I want to invite to this table and break bread with you feel me yeah how do you decide who you who you listen to in certain scenarios would I trade seats with you right now period Mm -hmm. period would I sit in your chair that's it outside of and it has nothing to do with money but and and I'm not gonna put names out there but there's one man in my life that I met in college and he's been the pinnacle of who I wanted to be as a man not his money nothing but how he carries himself right who he is to others who he is to his family that's what I look at I don't look at what you have because I can get that too but I can't get your heart I can't get your thought process and I can't get the way you treat people so I have to watch that and I have to see what you do. How many sacrifices do you make for others through yourself, et cetera? That's what I look at. It, trust me, there's a lot of people where I'm like, yeah, I like your car, but I don't like you. <laughs> like, I'm, just, I'm not, I'm not going to listen to you just because you, you drive a nice car. I don't care because I don't know who you were in getting that. I will never fold on my morals and ethics. So that's who I look at. Like, what do you stand for? Are you a liar? Are you going to stand on that when it doesn't affect you positively? Because there's a lot of things that I've said in my life that I had to sit on after it didn't go well. But I said it. Okay, I'm going to lose some money here. Or this isn't going to work out or these things. And a lot of times people don't and can't do that. Maybe it's just because I have a better memory of what I say and that haunts me if I don't stay true to myself like it has tattooed, bro. Stay true matters. There's these, these are all who I am, right? It's a compilation of things that I've done, experienced in my life and put it together to tell my story. But to answer it, would I sit where you're sitting right now? That's how if I if I respect you. Yeah. But there's a lot you're going to grow up and you're going to realize like, oh, wow, like you're successful, but you are not respectable. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm already realizing it now. Just there's a lot of you get a, a at some point you'll just start getting a lot of advice thrown at you, and it's like it's tough to filter through it and decide on. Oh man, this guy was knew what he was talking about. You kind of just have to trust your gut, and that's a great way to look at it. Where you said, "Would I would I trade spaces with you?" Yeah. You know? It's the it's easiest easy way to look at it. Mm-hmm. It's so direct. And and listen, don't judge the advice. Judge the intention of the advice. And I think that's where a lot of people get convoluted in it. They look at the person, they either get overwhelmed by what they presume they are or have, and then they take the information. But again, we never started the same way. Like, I'm never going to tell you do X, Y, Z and this will work out for you. I'll give you my honest opinion, but I'll say I truly don't know because I'm not you. I don't know how you react. Anybody that says do this and this will work, unless it's 1,000% an objective scenario, they're lying to you. And that's how I judge character. Are you going to lie to me to try to assert your dominance over me like you know more? Well, you clearly don't know more because you're acting as though this is a fact and this isn't. This is subjective. You have no idea. You don't know God. He can't talk to you. You can't control the situation. So it's more so here are the parameters of advice. Do what you want. If it doesn't work out, call me and we'll figure this out together. That's the advice I give. That's the advice I'd like to receive. Not, Josh, do this or you're a failure. <laughs> that's how so many people do it, too. It's like that's that's what gets the, gets the clicks is everybody wants that reassured, 100% foolproof plan. And it's 
it's not the case. Is life like that? No. Yeah. Literally. And it, everybody everybody wants the 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 full hundred steps of how to do this, how to start this and Okay. I'm gonna give you the best analogy in life, right? From friends to family to clients to players to anybody in my life that I, I care about and wanna see do well. I use this analogy. You're the bowler, I'm the bumpers on the side of the alley. You don't need me, but I'm there to protect you from the fucking gutter. And after a while, you figure out your lane. And then I don't need to be there anymore and you're a success. But I can't claim that. I'm not there to, to help you figure out your alley. I'm just there to keep you out of the gutter. So you're not always going to need me. But when you do, I'm going to always be there. And hopefully if I do a good job, you don't need me anymore. A lot of times people assert themselves in low key, in my perspective, keep people where they need them to still feel like it's benefiting them. Right. Hmm. And they now have that as like a transactional thing, I feel like, too. And it's like, hey, like, I'm here for you. Like, I'm helping you out. Like, you're doing well now. Like, hey, let me now let me let, let me, me get hand s- it, like, let me hold a dollar. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> OK, bro. No, that's I mean, like, I, that's great. Like, even if, I think just off of that saying alone or the metaphor that you're kind of using with the bumper analogy and bowling, I feel like that is the way parenting kind of should be in, in a line with, you know, how you want your kid to grow up is like, I'm I want my kid parent. to grow up happy and healthy. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And you're, you're there and you're there for support, but it's also like future kid in the future kid. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe huh? we we're, we're dropping uh, big news on the potty tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <I got twins. laughs> Man. That would be something. Um, so, I mean, back to, like, the advice. Do you think there's too many people on social uh, media that are giving advice? And, like, how do you – I mean, I know we said, you know, would you sit in that person's shoes? But, like, there's, there's a lot so of many smoke people. and mirrors. Yeah. On so- the th- <laughs> Whenever I scroll through social media these days, I'm going to be honest with you. I look at pages and I think, you can be anything you want to lie about and this is what you chose. And, and literally, if you go onto social media, I can guarantee less than 3% of people on all social media are truly transparent to who they are. It's a resume. It's an actively changing resume for whatever you're trying to use it for. Very few people use it to truly share, right? And when I say that, right, those, those made up thought stats, right? There's no validity to them. That's just my perspective. That's predicated on people that use it in a business setting, right? That have more than a thousand followers that are actively trying to gain followers or posting. If you're posting for a purpose other than yourself, you're outside of that 3% to me. And that's what I'm saying. And don't get me wrong. I'm not in that 3% at all because I'm specifically trying to expand and share more of the process of losing okay you have to lose to learn so my videos are a compilation of my losses where i'm just sharing the two cents of what i learned it's not a fact again just bumpers for you and you moving forward and if you don't like it keep scrolling that's fine if you do cool like it if you really do, like another one and follow me and probably DM me like a handful of people do every time I post a video. That's cool. That's community. But I do think there are a lot of people out there that, like I started with, it's smoke and mirrors. Like, oh, man, that's crazy. I seen four dudes post the same license plated car. Like, <laughs> what are we doing? Why are you same both, private why jet. Why do you both have the same Rolex with a scratch on it? Like, this is weird. Like... <laughs> And it's just, why are we, what's the incentive of this? Like, I don't know if you guys just saw this in China, they're banning flexing. Like, really? you're not allowed to stunt your finances on social media anymore because there's absolutely no need. Because again, like you said, nothing makes me more upset when I'm on Instagram and I'm scrolling and some clowns on there like, you can make $440,000 in passive income if you fuck. Really, bro? <laughs> Do you know how much money $440,000 in one month is passively? Do you understand how much money you have to have earned in a real setting to earn that kind of passive income? 
But there are people that are uneducated. There are people that want to take shortcuts. There are people that you can consistently capitalize on, not make $400,000 from it or 440 or whatever the BS on that specific ad is, but they're probably making well over $10,000 a month lying to people, getting them to buy into this multi-level marketing or doing the same thing as all three of us. Like, put it this way. Imagine me selling a thousand roadmaps, but only the person that gets to the destination first wins. You don't know how many roadmaps I sold yet. (laughs) <laughs> you could be, you could have two and be on the road, or you could have nine ninety nine. Are you still gonna buy that roadmap? No way. <laughs> See what I, yeah, you understand? What, yeah. People don't All look depends. at it that way, and this is the thing. This is a separating thing. When I go into social media, I'm looking at it that way. Like, okay, if this this video has a million views and it's to get rich quick, like a million people beat me to this. No matter how good I am, I'm not gonna beat one in a million, right? Yeah, and nobody nobody's gonna catch up to those numbers. Like it's a million people can't all get rich. It's quick. like with the national <laughs> debt, bro. It's just gonna keep compounding, and we're just gonna keep fucking losing. <laughs> that's it. I, I mean, that's it. Do okay. you think America puts a stop on it like ever, like China would do, or what, people would the, lose uh, their mind? The national List. debt? No, 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 not the national <laughs> debt, bro. <laughs> like that would be wild. Could. That would be a wild. That would be another. <laughs> that's a podcast talk for another day, I guess. But I, like the the TikTok, like regulating it or like vi- videos, I feel like they can't do it. Like here's a China hot take: do it. Shouldn't we regulate a blabbering idiot? representing us before we worry about what we're consuming fair because enough, if we enough. are allowing this if and listen i don't have political bias but i i i'm a grown-up man if somebody is falling down the stairs and you're not helping them and you're not laughing at them slurring their words representing our country to the world like i'm sorry man you're just as bad you're as complicit so i think there's a lot of other things we need to worry about because at the end of the day, what, what we consume, what, what the youth consumes should be predicated on the parents. What the parents basically consume should be predicated on the morals and ethics that they learn from their parents. The problem is, is now we're looking at the government to tell us what we need to be doing. No, that starts at home. That starts with your friends. It starts with your families. That starts with your religious views. But instead, now it's people kind of put a lot of things to the side and look at Big Brother and like, what do we do next? What, what, where, where's my check coming from? Like, wh- yeah. what's going to happen next? You're going to print more money, right? It's like, oh, wait, like, you're responsible for your day-to-day. It's not the country's job, right? Mm-hmm. And if, I think a lot of times people externalize things instead of looking internally. Like, when I'm alone, I'm like, damn, what did I do? When other people are alone, they're like, damn, why does no one love me? Instead of actually questioning themselves, like, yo, if you're alone, there's a reason. If people don't want to invite you places, there's a reason. It's always someone else's fault. Yeah. <laughs> a big thing you hit on too a couple minutes ago was shortcut. I want to come back to shortcut because I think the trend these days, well, not the trend, but the problem in a lot of society today is everybody wants a shortcut to success. I don't blame them. A shortcut to having the big house, a shortcut to being able to travel to the nice car. Do you blame them? No. You see what all. I mean? But it's a problem though. It. it... So it's kind of a double-edged sword because how do you, you can't blame them for wanting a shortcut, but how do you get them to see that there's more than The distance gets shorter, the harder you work. You guys know Mm. that. That's it. The the distance gets shorter, the harder you work. And the odds of finding a shortcut increase when you start moving forward, right? There's a lot of whys in the road. I'm sure in your 39 episodes, you guys have hit a lot of things that you're like, I mean, what's on your shirt? What are you guys drinking? Isn't technically getting Stonies as a sponsor, shout out Stonies, a shortcut? Technically. You understand what Mm -hmm. I'm... But you guys busted your ass for how many episodes to earn that shortcut. You're going to get a reward if you keep working. The problem is, is people want it before they're willing to work. We'll go all the way back to the start for you two. You can't get this Stonies without starting. You didn't actively pursue it at no point in time did i ever hear from either of you that oh we're trying to get a sponsorship no you just did the fucking work and when you do the fucking work like i always say the work always works people will notice and then sometimes like you said you might interject and be like you know what i think i could probably use my brain instead of my brawn in this situation and create a shortcut so it goes back to i'm an honest person 
I work very hard until I don't work at all. And what I mean by that is there are things that I've done in my life that I've busted my ass for and they're going to pay me for a period of time now because I did all that work. And to some, depending on where you meet me in my story, it's going to look like I'm lazy or I took a shortcut. No, motherfucker, I put a decade into this shit. I'm reaping the rewards of my risks turned riches. But again, your story is only that of where the person picking up on it is. That's why I don't judge anymore. I was a judgmental motherfucker early on because I felt that. I was a projection of what, I was a mirror of what I felt. I was always being judged for my decisions. I was always being judged for dropping out of school, doing this, modeling, selling a business, starting, like being different. So naturally in my youth, I mirrored that back to people. The older I get, the more I'm amazed by people's differences, the more I'm amazed by people's different perspectives, the more I shut the fuck up. And I'm talking a lot right now, so imagine how hard <laughs> it is for me to shut that. But I listen because mm-hmm. it's the only way to learn is to shut these on, to turn these on and shut this thing off. It's <laughs> take the shortcuts when they're there, but don't beg for them. it's like i think the like basically it's like the harder you work the more opportunities are going to kind of present itself and just the more is always more (laughs) right yeah (laughs) i mean that's it and then you can and then eventually i mean you you hit on like the the part whenever it's it it makes itself available and you get smarter throughout the process too so you don't have to continue to to bust your ass in the process but you can do it in a lot smarter ways but still bust your ass a little bit you know but then just keep following through with it but then like you said too gets to a certain point whenever you go you know what i can step away now for a little bit did you two take shortcuts truly do you believe that Mm, it's a deep question i it's all With predicated it, yeah. on your perspective oh, of what a shortcut, shortcut is. is yeah it's a good point i mean i think i think the i don't know if it's like a shortcut question but it might, might be like an opportunity i i think of it more like the opportunity presents itself as in like you're mm-hmm. there working and then it's like hey somebody recognizes the hard work i feel like so i guess it's like opportunity and shortcuts like kind of in the same same i'm gonna say no no. i don't think we took any shortcuts because i think we didn't really have any goals in mind in the beginning we were just like we have these thoughts we have these conversations why don't we just record them with no like end goal in mind and so that's how we started was just one mic in the middle of the table and they're like, we have we have so many people in our network that have cool stories. Let's bring them on, the MVPs of our network. And just one by one, it kind of evolved. And then it was like new opportunities presented themselves. Then it was like sponsorship things came up, T-shirts came up. Just kind of happened. Yeah. Subliminal so, advertising. So from what you said, <laughs> no, from what you said, say it again. Hmm. The harder you work, the more opportunities present itself. So yeah. again, what? Okay, now with that stacking question what does a shortcut even look like to you two in this setting in this setting Mm. Mm. i mean because after i asked it i couldn't really think of one Uh, like you no matter what you do you have to sit there you have to do your work to mm. get a podcast completed true you can't just i think the only one that comes to mind is like pay to play like you could buy followers or buy views or something for mm-hmm. a podcast okay. something like that but um it's all perspective too though like you said absolutely it's a lot deeper than just being like 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 i said earlier just like i think people want shortcuts but what kind of shortcuts like what are you shortcutting and in, in my thing in a shortcut like i get fomo if i <laughs> he knows Dude, I'm a psycho in the gym. I'll be like, I'm going to do 12. I get to 11. I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to do 15. I get to fucking 13. I'm going to do 20. I get to 19. I'm going to do 25. And before I know it, I'm like, oh, wow, you're going to stop at 10. And that's how I look at things in life. Now, it's not, again, you can look at my leg and 15 surgeries. And again, I do things in excess because, like I said earlier, I don't care where the edge is. I'm going to find it by falling the fuck off. And I think a lot of people are so afraid to get to that point that they'll search for the shortcut as opposed to pushing themselves to a point where like, oh, you really fell. It's like, bro, it's it's the process of falling that you learn to fly. <laughs> like, You're never going to know if you can fly until you fall off the side and you're like, damn. 
And guess what? The first time you fall and it hurts, you're like, I got to figure this out because I'm not going to stop trying. It, it, it's why I go back. It, the, I guess the epicenter of this entire podcast is start. Like, just start. And then once you realize it doesn't hurt that bad, like I'm telling you, 15 surgeries later, yes, God bless Alex and a lot of people around me that held me up during all of them. But yeah, it hurts. Yeah, okay, cool. You can't do these things, but holy shit, am I a resilient motherfucker. Like I sit here and I'm listening to people and I'm like, oh, I can help you. I've been here. I've been deeper than this. And that's I look at it as a blessing. So when you jump, you fall, you splat. You pick yourself back up, put yourself back together, walk back up. You don't know if this is my 15th time jumping off and still not knowing to fly or my first. So if I like, dude, grab my hand. Come on, I got you. Like, I I got this. You might fly and I might flop. But if you don't jump, there's no fucking chance. So I'm like, like, come on, let's jump, bro. I don't know when I'm supposed to learn how to fly. I'm still jumping. But there's a lot of people around me I believe in where I'm like, yo, come on, man. Like, jump on my back if you have to. Like, because in the air, you might be able to launch. And sometimes I think there's a lot of people that haven't caught yet that are not willing to help others fly for the sake of they didn't do it first. Like, dude, I pray that I've launched people further than I'll ever accomplish by trying to give. Because you never know if indeed that little bit of help, that bumper can launch them can get them past that little can be their shortcut maybe like be the blessing of a shortcut to another if you have the opportunity to be that's got to be like the best feeling in the world too it's like whenever you get through that stage and you like busted your ass and you're now that person that can help other people out too but i mean it comes with it's like double edged short yeah again yeah. and then you can pay it back i mean you touched on a little bit too with the 15 surgeries and the knee and we don't got to get too deep into it but I feel like this go around from the first knee to like now it's like just dirt on the shoulder for you. Like it's like, bro, this is nothing. And like you just went through like major crazy surgeries, like reconstructive surgeries on your knee. And now you're chilling here with like no crutches, what, three months post-op? Not even. Yeah. I mean, it, it, like I have tears in my eyes thinking about it. But yeah, like <sighs> I, I, You get to a point where you don't even worry about what's next because if you always fight back, does it matter? Like I, I, the the thing I've been saying (laughs) and a lot of people don't like it is I'm undefeated until I die. And I stand on that on the other side of talking to God almost dying. I stand on that 15. I stand on that how many times is going into anesthesia. And and that's just my surgeries. Not to deal with the financial complications, the business complications. Like people only see what they want to see to make themselves feel better about where you are and where they're not. On the other side, the only thing I can tell people is get the fuck back up. Mm-hmm. It's the life story of Jared Zeke is like no matter how many times it's I'm coming back and it's round number X like I'm, I'm ready to go if I don't quit I, I I can't fail and a lot of times I've used the word failure in the past and it's just like dog you have to lose to learn and the hardest part in life is to let go of the loss to fucking learn. We hold on to things like we hold on to people. We hold on to losses so long that you lose the message in them and then you become the loss. How many people have you met in your life that said, woe is me? I'll just use myself as an example. I go to therapy a few times a week and there's people that are like myself. I'm amazed by because I'm nothing compared to what they went through. It, it, listen, one thing I'll say to the camera and to you guys, the worst pain someone's felt is the worst fucking pain someone has felt. And I don't care if it's your 5,000th surgery or your first surgery or you got a paper cut and you're three years old and that's the worst thing. you. I get it. I felt worst. The worst. I get it. And that level of empathy now has allowed me to drop this veil of judgment, has allowed me to understand myself to a degree where I'm like, dude, like, I don't care your opinion. 
you're you're not what you say you are i'm always gonna be what i want to be and you just drop things and people can't do that they hold themselves where they were and i'm saying that as somebody that no lie when i went through this this is 14 surgeries i'm like man dude whoa then god's like hey <laughs> i got something for you here's another one now what now what are you gonna do and i'm like oh shit i don't know bro i don't know like i don't know what i'm gonna do but i know i'm gonna wake the fuck up and figure it out every day you allow me to wake up right now in the morning you know my dog camp the man my dog will jump up on the bed put his head right here right here <laughs> lift it and i'm like you ready to pray and he'll put his head on my chest and i'll say a prayer every morning i'm like god just thank you for waking me up this morning because now the rest is on me the rest is on me and then i say thank you for the losses lessons and blessings and when i yell amen that boy pop up and i go feed him and our day starts but i think a lot of people don't start their days with gratitude i posted something the other day it's like i'm grateful like jerry bob and mickey for a reason bro for a reason if I'm here, I can play the game. Okay, I, I've been pretty high up in this game, bro, and I've been pretty far down. But let me tell you, when you're at the top of the mountain, there's just more mountains. And when at your bottom, you really are at the bottom. And sometimes you're blessed to have people around you. Sometimes you're not. I've hit the bottom and had nobody. I've hit the bottom and had people help me up where forever you're in my heart. I, got, I don't care what I go through. You're in my heart. That got deep. Sorry, bro. No, we <laughs> needed it, dude. I mean, that's what we're here for. That's that's exactly what we're here for. I mean, it's the truth of just like who you are as a person. I th I think like what everything that you've went through has kind of just made you more appreciative of it, which is like crazy because so many other people would have just turned the other way and be like, "What the fuck, man!" Like, and have taken it a complete other way, but it I think in turn made you more grateful and like appreciative for everything else that's like around you. Um, but I think I don't want to sit here and act like I'm not human. And I was always, Oh, I'm no, <laughs> I cry. I right. hurt. I question, I question and curse God. Trust me. Like all the time. I'm like, yo, you're a sick motherfucker. I talk to God crazy. I talk to God crazy, but you know what? He talks back crazy. And sometimes they're crazy losses, and sometimes they're the most beautiful blessings that you can't even fathom. I couldn't even ask God for some of the blessings he'd given me. So it's like, bro, I have to be aware that for every good, there is a bad. And it's balance in life. People think their lives are always going to be something so great. They will, but guess what? <laughs> they're going to be really fucking bad, too. So I look at this as like, I'm either going to... I I was just talking to your mom. I don't know if you were in there. It's like, I'm either going to die... And all of the shit I went through is going to make sure other people are good. And those balances will affect those that I love. Or they're going to affect me. And I'm going to affect others that I love because they were there holding me down for all the shit. Like, the older I get, the more I realize you ain't shit without love and people around you, bro. <laughs> I don't... I, I would trade every dollar that I've gained and lost and gained and lost to make sure I keep the people I love around me. Because the money's going to come and go always and the hardest thing in life is dealing with the loss of somebody that you're never gonna get again yeah money can't buy that I, i'm time it, i mean but that's the oh, beautiful that's part yeah. that's the beautiful it's part about you. life is I, i'm sure you guys hear me talk about the moment the mo like bro it's this moment like you you know like we're not worrying i hope I'm not worried about anyone else. I'm not worried about anything else. It's, I'm in here with two young men that I saw grow up, that I'm excited to see keep growing, that someday I may be dead and gone, but you guys praying, keep going. It's like, yeah, that's that's something special to me. It's like, I'll see some shit. I just saw one of your uh, ads today. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, yo, this is fucking weird. Like, OK, big brother, like get off my phone. But I was like, yo, this is cool. You know what I'm saying? Because I remember being in the store, you talking about what you're. So it's it's what I was saying is like, I don't take any validation from it. It's like, no, if you care about somebody, then you should always clap for those people. I think at times there's people that say that they want to see you do well but they never want to see you do better than them. It's like, bro, I want you I want you to forget my name. I want you to forget I want you to be so great you forget my name. Because your world is so much bigger than mine. I'm good with it. I think a lot of people are afraid to say that. 
Yeah, I agree with that. I wonder what it's, it is that like holds people back like that too, where it's like you don't insecurity. Yeah, insecurity. You just want to get them. You want to see them get to a certain point. Shortcuts. Insecurity. Shortcuts, and you feel like you deserve it more than they do. What do you think that's built upon? Hmm. What's beat. that? Shortcuts? No. Just Why people think that? Because at the end of the day, it's easy for me to clap for somebody that I know worked harder than me. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm also willing to clap for the person I know didn't work harder than me, but just got the opportunity before me. Cool. I'm, I'm not hating on that. I'm not. A I, younger me would. That one's harder, I think, for people to swallow. It's, it's if, youthful. If it's the opportunity that presents itself before you have that opportunity, but you also have to realize that that opportunity might come around. Here's the thing. But you, then people get salty in the moment. And they're like, oh, no, what the hell? That could that should have been me. I think it gets <laughs> amplified, too, by like social media and being connected right now. I, yeah. I mean, it's always existed, but I think now you're so in, t- you're so in tap with everybody yeah. else that you just always know whenever, oh, well, you just got this multiplies new car. it. <laughs> What's the saying? Comparison is the thief of happiness. Yep. And we live in a society that does nothing but compare. I mean, even the ads you get are comparing this to that. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, I should compare. Dog, I'm one of fucking one in every aspect. Everything that you do, everything that you do is original only to you. People will try to replicate it, but when you get down to the details, they're never going to be the same, ever. Now, the thing is... That's a loud ass Damn, truck. No. <laughs> the thing we got them every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that's crazy about that though is the older you get the more you realize I have no fucking clue what you do. <laughs> like day in and day out. I have no idea. Like what I did texted you just, him. What did you just love to like live in a live in a wall like in somebody's world for like one day just to not see at what's all. going on. Not no. at all. I, was, I, I would just for like fun, just like, but you get that day back. Like you get that creep. day back in life. <laughs> no, bro. Like I'm just saying, like now that you say, now that I am thinking about it, yeah. that probably is whatever you did in high school, nah. bro. I don't want to know. <laughs> no, but like, I don't even know what I'm trying to say here. Yeah, you do. I'm sorry. I threw you off. Go ahead. But like, I, I, I just, what somebody thinks. What, you just yeah, want more perspective. Yeah, what somebody thinks, thinks and sees throughout their day. Like, I don't know. Well, I, I mean, there's times where, yeah, it would solve a lot of problems if you understood the other side. But you know how to understand the other side? Listen. It's to ask the right questions, listen, and be willing to change your stance on your side. And people won't do that because we live in a society where everything needs an opposition. Everything needs an opposition. So even though some people don't necessarily agree or disagree, they just take a stance to take a stance because maybe that's the cool thing at this point. And most people that do, they post their stance, they share their stance. It's all good and well, but very few of them are willing to die and do something for their stance. And those are the people that I align with. Like, are you willing to die for this shit? Why are we why are we just posting about it? I I it's just too much click, I, like just too much things for the likes. Yeah, like virtue not, signaling. Yeah, There's too much everything on yeah. social media, but mine is like it's the shirt I made a while ago. It's give me something real. Who are you really? I'm not listen, I won't put my name on something unless I promise you I'll die on it. Like I'm not. I can't. Like I value my word in that aspect. I think that's also like what builds going back on it is like brands and versus like clothing what's the what what do you stand for not yeah. what are you wearing right now is that what makes a brand over just being in some other clothing line at the end of the day or just some t-shirt no, no. truthfully it's it's a popularity contest and now the thing is the brands that last have depth to them But that doesn't mean that a brand with no meaning and no message can't be cool. It's like tattoos, right? I sit here and I'm like, oh, let me give you this deep, over, in-depth. No, like you don't care. (laughs) They're cool, right? And there are people that have more tattoos than I do that literally didn't think about them at all. They were just in a situation and they lived in the moment. That's fucking cool, too. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's, again, my perspective is cool's cool. Like my cool is no different than your cool. And the problem is, is a lot of people think that they're so special, their cool's cooler. It's like, what? The definition's the definition, my boy. Cool is cool, 
right? But people want to give their two cents and their positioning on it thinking they're better. Or that maybe, like we said, the comparative of someone else, they're worse. It's like, bro, just stay in your lane, you know? Do you read? I love reading. I was going to say, I was I was curious on, like, what is your inspiration behind a lot of your mantras and sayings? And, like, because you have so much mm-hmm. wisdom in your brain. Just, like. Thanks. You're able to, like, <laughs> pull it out. You're able to pull it out so fast. Like, it's it's uh, crazy. It's 15 surgeries. It's sitting on a couch and doing the work people aren't willing to bro i've lost so much shit like i'll cry about it because it's <sighs> but it's taught me love it while you have it appreciate it and if you ever had it like it's always yours and i don't mean that possessively i mean that my story is always mine like my 15 surgeries are always mine the losses i've had the wire that i pulled out of this leg that almost killed me a year ago a year ago almost to the date when i got this one done like i still have the wire that's my story when it comes to wisdom it's what i take in and challenge it when i read a book people think i'm crazy for this so i read a book and the first time i read a book i have my notes and it's in opposition of the author then i read the book again And I go in opposition of my notes, trying to tell myself where I'm wrong. Then I read the book for fucking fun, right? And the last book that I read, God bless my cousin. My cousin is arguably one of the most intellectually deep people I've ever met. You've met Jonathan. Yep. Um, He has probably a 150 plus IQ. Just (laughs) genius. He taught me how to play chess when I was like four, right? I'll show you the picture. Long story short... He's always seen who I was as a, as a child, right? He went through some tough times early on like I did and throughout life. And he was always a big brother for that. And when I go through hard times, there's always a book waiting for me. Um, I went through some stuff. I think it was this surgery. I don't remember. The Alchemist, he got me. Mm-hmm. I've read that book probably 150 times. I have McTub tattooed. I tell my players McTub. I, it just, it was written. And I trust God on that. So I don't question God because of that book. The most recent book is called Awareness by Anthony DeMello. And in that book, oh man, I recommend that to anybody that's willing to, it's an easy read. I think this is my sixth time reading it now since my surgery. But it's thought provoking. And I'll butcher this, but I believe that he was, he was in high up in a specific religion and later on in his life, it started to question it more. And that's what I am. I don't take anything for what it is. Because unless it's coming from a source that I'm, wow, I, you know, I respect, I trade places with you. I'm like, I don't know, man. I'm going to vet this. And if it's solid, then you let me vet this. So when people don't, I'm like, oh, you, you don't really believe this stuff. So I, I stay away from it. But in that book, a lot of the lessons, my favorite thing from that book that I forget which chapter, even what it was referencing to. But he said, explain the what the color green is to a blind person. <laughs> and, and now take this take this a step back. If you never tell a child what kind of bird they're looking at, then they always see the beauty of what is. But the moment you label a bird as something, that's what it is to that child. And you've taken away their ability to create something in their mind. What's your favorite book that became a movie? Hmm. Probably The Hunger Games whenever I was a kid. Okay. And you read it before you saw the movie? I did. What about you? I would say I read like some of the Percy Jackson Jackson books yeah. before they became movies. Those were hard. Yeah, Those they were. That were, was a good those series. Books were yeah. good. Okay, now here's my question: Whenever you saw the movie and it was casted, do you ever read that book or you know reference that book with your original perception of what the characters were to you, or is it what they were casted in the movie? Mm-hmm. It's always the movie. It's, it's the movie. I, mine's yeah. Harry Potter. Like there, mm-hmm. it, it they've taken away what harry potter is when i read it like when harry potter came out i was still growing up where my mind was like oh my god hogwarts this and and jk rowling's did such a nice job giving you this visual through words where i'm like then i saw the movie and i'm like damn it's ruined yeah this was less than what i thought it was and i was just disappointed 
And that's what it is, is once you give something context, it takes away the purity of it. So in my youth, I always wanted to label things and tell people, no, I don't fucking know, bro. Have you ever watched a movie and then went back and read the book? Mm, I can't pinpoint it. I know. That's what I was There's a lot of movies, so. yes, because I didn't know the movie was built upon a book. Mm. You know what I mean? Right. But then I probably didn't read the book, though. I know. I, I like, can't think of anyone um, off the top of my what's, head. Uh, Jack Reacher. Oh, uh, they made a book about that? You mean they made a movie, movie about, about the book? Yeah, jeez. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. I think I've got Alchemist in my Amazon card actually right now. Just the right. Alchemist. I'm reading uh, 48 Laws of Power right now. You I have one. my feelings about that book, but it's I won't a little share bit, them. Uh, it's, it's dark I'm psychology. not done yet, so I'm not going to say anything. But it is a little bit. Is it like dark magic? Interesting. Uh, here's my <laughs> perception on that book. It's. It's basic. Um, I'll let you talk. Actually, I think <laughs> that the Forty Eight Laws of Power is a great playbook to defend yourself against stupid people that think they're smart because they read. And what I mean by that is, if you read the book, you realize that it's the author means well, maybe. But a lot of it is just if you're smarter, you can manipulate a person. That's literally the premise. I got through that book and I was like, holy shit, did I just waste this time Ooh, doing this? My bad. <laughs> like, I just, I, I don't know. But again, there's people out there that are like, that's my Bible. And it's like, no slight to you, bro. You're probably laughing at me that I read The Alchemist 150 times. So, again, to each their own. I just, I think it's dangerous to consume literature in a small level. If you're not willing to consume all literature that can give you a different perspective against that and then formulate your own perspective. That's, again, why I write when I read and go against what I read, because I know I'm wrong. But I also know if I'm wrong, whoever wrote this fucking book is, too. So there's real messages in it, but I need to pull them out the way I need them, not the way you want to deliver them, because you don't know me. If I knew the author, it would be different. If the author knew me and was delivering that message to me, it would be different. But baseline things, and I understand that they can't do that, but man, there's a lot of stuff out there that you don't know who it's going to land on and what they're going to do with it. Yeah. Yeah, you should read it. I'll check it out. <laughs> I mean, dude, that's like the crazy story too. I mean, you think about like reading and what was like the one book with the guy that like killed John Lennon? And he, it was because he was reading that one book, The Catcher in the Rye. Oh, The Catcher uh, in the Rye. I, I don't see. I'm not cultured. But, I mean, what, what, yeah, what he no. was saying too, though, about having whoops, having a uh, perspective in like just what you're reading. So if you read just like one or two books and then base your whole life off of that, it's a very dangerous game, and that can be applied outside of books too. If you just consume like. Fox one or two or yeah, CNN one or whatever you want of news or <laughs> entertainment or anything and then you just base your whole life off of that it's very dangerous but that's a lot of people do that I, dude, and it's crazy if you base your life off of what you see on Instagram what do you think those are though shortcuts they're fucking yeah. shortcuts dude is listen again and I can only see the world through my eyes but like we started and like you asked if I want to trade places with you I don't care what you're saying. So the era we are in, in all media, including social media, dude, think about when Facebook or Instagram fact check something. Excuse me? Like, who the <laughs> fuck? Are, like, you understand? Like, I can't even conceptualize a thought to verbalize because it's just such an asinine perspective on their end to say like we are the fact checkers <laughs> you need an independent oh it's an independent source that we pay like and we what? picked yeah like <laughs> jesus dude how dumb are you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. but there are people that are like oh it says it's a fact i just went through something that was like based on the facts i said what are the facts yeah. you understand <laughs> that your facts are collected by liars presented to other liars that need these things to be faxed for them to get what they want but again, we live in a society that a, a, a brazen opinion consumed by many becomes a fact. And you can look at it on in both sides of politics, in anything. It's We are consuming the regurgitation of I don't even know the source. How many steps are between the source and us? It's the telephone game. And modern media as a whole is the telephone game where unless you're on the front lines... 
I'm sorry. And even then, whoever's, it, it's like, can you do a, a one of one? It's the Lauren Hill. Can you do it to a point where no one else can interfere with it? Because the moment someone can, they have a narrative. They have an opinion. They have a perspective and they're out actively recruiting people for that. Think about it. You know, when you're in a group yeah. of people and you don't like one of them, no matter what, it takes you a lot, like consciously to be like, I eh, don't say that. And then you're still saying, you're like, fuck, man. Oh, man. <laughs> you know, but in those moments, it's real. Like, yeah. you know, people are always actively recruiting. Alex, who is the last person you called? And what did you talk about? Oh, the last person I called. And what did I talk about? It's probably my boy Tom today. Whenever I was working, he was driving in. Tom Howe? Tom Howe, yeah. Shout, shout out, out to Tom, Tom Howe. <laughs> he, he'll call me because he's the assistant AD for Bethel. And, like, we'll just call because, I mean, majority of my job, I'm just on the road. So we just, like, bullshit. Yeah. I don't, I don't, we're probably just talking shit on each other, truthfully. It's probably, like, <laughs> not good at all bringing up do you probably think what it, we were talking about. Do you like to just kill Tom when you're in the car talking to people? Yeah, yeah, I'll talk to people. I and uh, I, I think, I don't know. It's weird. I, whenever we got back from like the training, it was they like asked us, you know, "Do you go home like after you do stuff with like a bunch of people, and do you like continue to talk, or do you just go up to your room and like go to bed?" And I think for me, it was like I continue to talk because like, I think social scenario, yeah, social scenarios kind of energizes me. I don't know. Is it the same for you guys? I love voice memos. <laughs> I do like a voice memo. Honestly, no. If I'm in like a big social setting, I feel like I go home and I like sit on my phone or I just You're like, like cool. That was a lot. I like got to recharge because yeah. I'm very introverted, you know. So mm -hmm. like for in certain scenarios, I am. Yeah. I guess is it's weird how it works. Like but that's certain, why this works. I was literally gonna say that you're yeah. the extrovert. You're the calculated introvert calculated introvert that's a good yeah. way to put it you're smart and i'm not I discrediting just come off, no, yours I, i'll, like, I'll, I'm say, sorry, I, I'll I, say i come off the cusp and just say dumb shit every now and then <laughs> but you're that's why you guys work you know i yeah. saw him he's over there like okay like what's next and you're kind of just like in the story which is good you have good balance what do i say balance it's key yin and yang it's yin a very yang. important thing man yin and yang <laughs> <laughs> speaking of speaking of which, I saw some crazy ass thing the other day too. It was like of Genghis Kong how he like eliminated like ten percent of the world's population. He killed a lot of people. A lot. Who of did? Who was I with that we were talking about this? Genghis I was at the Kong. barber. You know the barber shop in Zealy. Luxury oh, with studio. Jiggy, with Jiggy, with Jiggy, dude. The videos they make now crack bro, me up. Bro, they're wild. They he's just in there cutting. Yeah, bro, that was insane. <laughs> what? Some barber in Zillion Opal just like threw a bunch of bunch of his business cards like all out in front of their door, their nah, barber so shop or some shit. I don't shop, know the story. The barber shop we had on in Zealy, like these cool guys we had on one time, and uh, I get my hair cut there too. But this other barber looks shop good. From they did a nice job. Thanks. They, uh, this other barbershop from Cranberry is like opening a new spot, like right down the block from them. Oh, so they got beef. And they came in the one day and on their doorstep of the shop was just business cards for this place, this new place. And they're like, all right, like what the fuck? Like, it's just <laughs> like crazy. <laughs> That's so he, like, put it, he put them on his story, and, like called them out. And, uh. Yeah. Did he say like, come get your business he's cards, like, come bitch. Get your fucking <laughs> shit off my store <laughs> Or something. Good thing and it's up there and not where certain places are. Yeah, yeah like, literally. I'm like, oh, you guys can calmly and, uh, handle this. I right. don't know. It all, it all worked out, I guess, from when I was there. Bro, the I'm other throwing day, a chair through your front window. I was like, like, oh, here you go. Barbershop beef. Like, that's, <laughs> that's crazy. crazy. <laughs> oh, you got the sun. He's getting cooked over Yeah, there. you are. We, we got to switch hats. Do you want this hat? I need He's to get like my looking haircut at us like, oh, my eyes. I see Jesus. <laughs> I was wondering. I'm like, yo, why is he looking like that? I was like, oh, the sun's. Is yeah, it just came back from behind that tree. But yeah, it's like he's, um, how did we even talk about the barber stop, barber shop? You asked about know. the last call. And oh, then, last call. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's a good question. Who's the last person you called? Oh shit. Probably Anth. Probably. That makes no, sense. No, you called me. I was the last person you called. Yeah, actually, no. Yeah. I didn't answer. I, I, I didn't liar. answer. I am a liar. No, because I'm like, wait, who? Because I, I was here. like, he called me. He picked me up. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, but I don't know. Probably eighth. Yeah. There was a. There was a. We were on the deep conversation. I want to get back to it. Like a deep point. I'm not going to try to force it, but I might force it. Wow, and it had me thinking. Nice jet, sorry. <laughs> that is cool. That's the cool part about being outside. It's like you hear like a plane going over. You hear the birds oh, chir wow. chirping and everything. It does or, give you an ambiance that you don't get. Like in the studio, it's like four walls in my like, Everybody, yeah. everybody's crammed in here yeah 
One moment you could relive in your life if you could pinpoint. L Dart's not one that I could think of. You're not to a be honest. Not a fan of it. No, I like it. I just right. don't know where it came from, so I know mm. I didn't make it. You know what's crazy is I really don't even. You I'm trying to remember where Mall Man came from, to be honest with Mall you. Man. Oh, that's it. And all of them, they'd be like, Mall Man. <laughs> dude, so my little brother and him. So look, <laughs> I met this dude because of my little brother. He was probably like eight years old. Okay. Playing and mini hoops. Yeah. I don't even remember. No, somewhere. Was mini, yeah, we were playing mini hoops and ants. And like, of course, I liked, I liked Hoopers, so. I don't know. So now, anyway, fast forward, they grow up like my little bro gets grown, same age. And now whenever they, like, because they want to see each other for a while. So he'd come over, I'd call him and be like, hey, can I get my car detailed? He'd pull up with the truck and my little brother walk out. He'd be like, mom, man. <laughs> and these two for like five minutes are just going off at and each then, other. And, like, then I go, Tone, hey. yeah, and then I go back to him like, Tone. Hey, I don't. I don't even know when and why it started, but it it started some some you, point. You in time. went to school, yeah. And when he when when you guys were at school, whenever we'd see him, I would do it. I'd be like, "Mo man," like it would just make me happy. I'm like, "Okay," like something to it. When you don't see somebody for a while, I think you just say just awesome though. Like if you got a good nickname for somebody, like yeah. it just so who much more fun who has say. the wildest nickname you've ever heard. I don't even want, I'm not going to say it. Say it. it. Like, no, I'm yeah, not. that's fair. That's fair. That's it's fair. one of those, Good like, question. and a lot of, you know, the best nicknames are the ones that, like, individuals don't really remember why they're called that and it's not good <laughs> but they go by their nickname and not their real name it's crazy yeah. how many people do you think you know that go by their by a nickname and like a surname and not their real name uh during high oh, school yeah. college i feel like most people yeah honestly at least guys like the ones in college definitely. were the dumbest ones Mine ever, bro. Mine was simple. It was just V on. Like, people call me my last name. Last name, name yeah. First. But, like, during high school and, like, early elementary, it was, like, neon V on. That's kind of cool. But that is kind of cool. Kinda you cool. need to get a neon, a V on, and put it in your office now. There we go. Oh, be fire. Oh. Yeah, you got Mikey Two Clips. That's his a good is, nickname. His, That's his might be That's one a, of the most cool. Do you know that, where that stems from? Did he, he, he said like the skate to it? Yeah, you he got, he was going here. Actually, yeah. He said he? the skateboarding. I think he because he was talking about break it down because I love Mikey so much. I don't well, remember. Yeah, no, he was talking about how he was like doing a YouTube or he was just recording at a skate park or something. I might be butchering the story, but um, how he was there and he was just like recording like just small little clips and then like his one boy was like, "Yo, like trying to get like these two clips of me or something like that." And then it was like Mikey two clips. He was Mikey like, that's the clips. YouTube name, and it was just so all skating fire. clips. Oh, I had another one, actually. When I worked at Treesdale, like, Joey Porter Sr. would call me Doogie. Because Doogie Howser. Like, Doogie Howser. <laughs> <laughs> I can't unsee it, Wait, 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 Dude, wait. Dude, swear, him and some of his boys that's around pretty, the club. I don't know who that is. That's, that's, Doogie, come that's over here. <laughs> pretty good. That's, and that's cool, because it's, like, joking, but it's... When you have a nickname, people think it's... I'm like, Holy shit, Josh. Doesn't it? <laughs> Holy shit, Josh. Josh, low Dude. key. Low key, bro. Yeah, I mean, those, that was what they referred to me as. For JP like Senior, he got he got some wit to him, man. That's a good one. He's you know what's dude. hilarious is I was in a Wexford CVS and I was like just chilling there, getting a like sinus like relief something. Next thing you know, it was Joey Porter or Joey Porter walked in. I was like, I was like, yo, bro. I was like, your son's legit. He was like, oh, thanks, bro. I don't know why I just remember. Dude, JP Junior is a dog. He's just it's living life these days. He's cool. Good. He is. He I can love be that. scary sometimes still, but really? bro, he's still yeah. big. He's still big as hell. I didn't realize how tall he was. He's like six. He's like at least six three, six four. Yeah. I'm like, damn. Like I'm just a small person. I feel like. I'm glad we have his son. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. Duke can ball. Duke can ball. Speaking of sports, if you didn't play basketball, what sport would you play? Ooh, golf. Me too. Here's the thing, right? Do you I'm think Young Jay Z would have wanted to play golf though? I always hear Young that analogy, and like I always think back to myself, and I'm like, man, I, I always said like, screw golf, this is too slow for me. So I, yeah. I honestly like I did martial arts for 15 years. Like I was very competitive. I kickbox for eight. It, I did that because I was a nut, and my dad was like, yo. You're going to get your ass beat. I ended up beating ass, right, and loving it, but I learned discipline, and that gave me, well, at the time, my athleticism. I think that as a kid, pre-8, 9 maybe, before we start to take in what we like, we're directed. So, you know, I didn't really get into basketball until I was 
probably eight. Like, I'll go to my Grams and McKee sport. I'll go up Crawford, play pickup. I loved it. I loved the culture. I, I felt, like, accepted. For the first time in my life, I felt accepted from a game. So I just fell in love with the game, and then I fell in love with the culture of the game, and I fell in love with the people that I played with. And I was just, it was a big family. With golf, yeah, you're probably right. Like, we didn't have shit growing up, so my dad didn't play nothing i didn't have a set of golf clubs until i was a grown man and that the girl that i told you she got me my first set and i got addicted i'm still not like you bro but like i love it when Josh's i have a f- game's legit bro. well i haven't Josh, had a full yeah. summer and i don't know how long to play <laughs> <True>. <laughs> you know no, you could rope a drive like i, I think if bad. you just got to give it uh, that's the thing with golf though consistency man, consistency time and but i love shots. it like it's it's oh, I love it me now. versus me all day mm-hmm. like it, it I think that's why I say that, but if we're talking about money and all the others, soccer. I'm playing soccer. Mm. Because you're still – I don't think soccer players get enough credit for how athletic they are, for how incredible of athletes they are from a stamina position. And we don't – you know, there's the argument basketball or football. And I'm like, yeah, but how many people could play soccer? (laughs) True. Like, I, even when you watch Ocho Cinco, great player, don't get me wrong, but you watch him against pros and you're like, whoa, uh, yeah. this gap's big, you know? Mm-hmm. Or, like, did you see Pat? Ma- what is that league the there? Pat Mag- I don't even know the details. Pat McAfee had this cross cool. kick. I was like, yo, that's a dime, and the dude did a flutter kick and score. I said, oh, it's kind of cool. Yeah. So it's neat to see. I think that's one benefit of social media is the boom of take consuming other sports. Yeah. I mean, golf. You go on, I mean, I don't know what your feed's like, but I would say one out of three posts is golf for me now. I got a lot of golf, yeah. I actually have a lot of golf now, too. It's well, like it pinpoints basically COVID, like what you it's kind of started like. to grow a little bit with, like, people, like, probably some of it's social media. Also, some of it COVID was, like, it was, like, a safe thing to do or whatever. Yeah, but yeah. It's and, the ability to, I don't know, I mean. It's like, who's talking? Yeah, <laughs> I was like, Lauren? how do we hear that? Yeah, Lauren's in there screaming. I love that. I love that. Um, But, yeah, no, I would say one thing that I wish I played was football, though. The problem is with football is that if you don't get adjusted to getting hit, you have no chance to play. Yeah. That's one thing I respect about all my friends that play professionally, collegiately, even high school. Um, I didn't do any of those. So I look at them, and I'm like, y'all some tough motherfuckers. Like, I have friends that will play a full season and be so banged up the whole year that when I go through this, I'm like, thank you guys for being my friend. I'm not going to say shit. Cause, now, again, I ain't getting paid for this, but it don't matter, man. You still are going to get paid. You can easily drop your head and be like, hey, tapping out. But I think of a dude like TB, for instance, too, like off the top of my head. Just dog. like slot, like the position he plays and like, he he's don't get the, enough he's respect. Not the, yeah, he I don't mean, get enough respect. So underrated. I mean, I mean, his size. He's not the biggest receiver, and like the dude goes across the middle small. of the field. But he's not small. He's not small. But dude goes across the middle of the field and like takes hits and still catches the ball from like middle linebackers that are cracked. Statistically, on, like, every play. statistically, Pause. in the NAS, <laughs> caught myself. In the last five years, statistically, Tyler Boyd is top three out the slot. Period. Yeah, I mean, I, check, I don't know that as a fact, but I guarantee that it is. <laughs> I check like even the for the last season. You look and he has a thousand yards. You're like, holy shit! Yeah, and you're coming off of. I think that their receiver core was one of the best, if not the best, in the league. Easy. I'm closing the window. I don't know what Lauren's up to in there. She's They're getting fired up. She is. I can't. I can't hear it the same way. Oh, for sure, hearing it. <laughs> The blooper reel. What did she say? I don't know. I just heard some yelling. Alex is going to stand on business in there. All right. (laughs) (laughs) I love Alex so much. He's a good dude. How'd it go? Mission, mission hey, wait. My neighbor, my neighbor you know what we should do for the next one of these uh-huh. is we should get like a pizza oven and just like an put the pizza in while we're cooking an and be like no, maybe bro. that could be our next sponsor a pizza bro. oven brand dude that's no, genius umis are fire up the traeger honestly you can make pizza on the traeger 
I've seen Honestly, there's so many like cool grills out now. Like they've got the fire. What are those? Uh, flat stone, right? The uh, what, what are those mean? called? You got oh, that brand. You, you got Traeger. Blackstone. 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 Yeah. Blackstone. You got you got those right green egg things, which are like yeah, some the green smokers eggs are or crazy. something. Yeah, Do you ever realize how heavy those are? Very legit. Yeah. Even that lid to that's pretty pretty uh heavy and there's no well they uh, gotta be insulated yeah yeah like I mean, they have to that's the crazy part with those things <sighs> they're good man they're they're legit but i had charcoal burgers this weekend oh uh, yeah i don't know <sighs> bro there's nothing that compares to a charcoal burger ah uh, you gotta make sure that there's not too much charcoal when you taste kerosene like from the lighter fluid yeah, you gotta let it burn off. You gotta let it burn yeah, off. Burn it off. You gotta, love, you gotta let it burn. <laughs> burn, burn you gotta it let it burn. Off, let it let it ash up a little bit. But those charcoal burgers are the best. Oh yeah. I don't. I mean, Traeger. Like what I'll do on it is. You're talking just a charcoal grill, right? Yeah, yeah, just charcoal grill with the. I never. A charcoal I didn't briquettes. even know what a gas grill was until I was probably twenty-one. DZ Damn. wasn't. DZ wasn't cooking them. Dude, no gas come grill. on. Charcoal D- wars. Were DZ up on and UD <laughs> are, bro. Listen, you guys want to hear a story? So. DZ's Jared's dad, by the way. Yeah, DZ's right, yeah. my dad. UD's my uncle. They're brothers. Two peas in the fucking pod from the port, baby. <laughs> Coolest dude you'll ever meet. But they'll give you shit. Anyway, they are grill masters. So every family, whatever, they're grilling. To this day, my uncle, he'll text me. He's like, you like brisket? I'm like, yeah, what's up? He's like, oh, I got a pound for you. <laughs> like, dude, every time he'll be like, you like ham? I was like, ah, I don't eat a lot of swine. He was like, all right, I'll just give this to AB, my, my brother. So they'll cook and cook and cook. Long story short, they never, ever used gas. So I didn't know. Well, we didn't exactly have the finances for that. You know, like you go to a nice house, they got just turn it on. I'm like, wow, that's it? Dude, we had, when I say it, it was like a craftsman. I mean, like the, the little circle one. The circle, the circle one. Circle, like yeah. the, the literally, like, this is it. Man, did that food smack though. So now when I go to people's houses and they have gas, and I'm like, uh, like I kind of taste the kerosene. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or the propane you de- or whatever. You definitely can. It's mm-hmm. definitely a huge taste difference. Um, there was something about the charcoal grill too. Like you clean it, but like that last steak you had and the seasoning, you taste that on your burger. <laughs> yeah, like, you left hey. it on. You left yeah, it on. Yeah, like you would even, season the hey, skillet. You even, know what I'm saying? Even Bobby goes, Jesus, like, don't clean that off. Like, keep that for the next time. <laughs> That's Bro, a, it, 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 it's it's still good. It's like great advice. We'll, we'll make burgers or something and then come out and, like, make a steak. Like, I'll put one, like, that's away from the season. Then you put the one that's on the old season and it's fire. Yeah. Still yeah, good. It's man. It's it Nothing beats grilling outside during the summer. Oh. oh. And, and, but the sun's got to be down. Like, right now. Like, right now is peak. Oh. We'll get like, it going for next time. Oh, we'll like cue, we'll cue it up. We'll get a. So we should try a pizza. I, I wanted need, to try one. I need be cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna get your guys' opinion on this because I'm gonna drop my idea on my podcast for like three years. So I, I it's marked. All right. For three years from now? No, I've been talking about it for three years. Okay. Maybe more, and I need your opinions because this is your domain and not mine, right? So, you know, I've I've been blessed that in my pursuit of what i wanted i've met some incredible people in that much like you guys have asked me and i've been blessed to share with you there's another side of the story that people don't see and we've been talking about social media etc so my thought for my podcast and strike me wrong or you know give me your two cents but i really want to call it the other side and i want to have individuals on it that have a perspective of society but that perspective is predicated on all that society knows and not the other side of their life what were they before they were who they are to to who they are does that make sense yeah no so i think we can it's a- get into that like what made you this way mm-hmm. what's the real story like because if if i didn't post things dude i'm a nobody on social media what do i have like a couple thousand followers or something cool but imagine if i had some of the followers that some of the people that I know have, if you have a million followers, 200,000, dude, 15,000, right? People are going to see what they want to see. But I think it's very important that people understand the other side of the story. What did they go through? Why are they this way? Why are they where they are? Taking away, Basically, I want to take away that notion of insecurity and jealousy that people have in projecting where other people are like, 
oh, wow, like if I knew that, I probably wouldn't feel the way I feel. And a lot of times who we are in reference to how we judge is predicated solely on us not knowing the other side of the story. And I mean that in the sense that I want to take it to a political point at some point. I want to take that out and be like, all right, well, what would you say to the opposition? What would you say to the other side of this? I don't know. It's just something I know, I that I really a, like. It would be a lot deeper than, not that this isn't deep, but like right. I'll be grilling people. Like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I want you to sit in that chair because there's something that no one knows about you. The hot it, literally, it literally goes back to what we talked about earlier when we were talking about the books. And it's like if you only consume one thing. This whole episode just ties together. I try like, to do that. Topic. I try to keep things cyclical. No, no, no. <laughs> because it, it? it's very important because oh, yeah. that's where we all are. Mm-hmm. It's the hypersensitivity that I said. Mm-hmm. That once something's planted in your mind, it's going to keep coming back. So for yeah. me, it's... It, oh, man. I'm going to use the word in it, but it's... We started with the start. And for me, that's the thing. And, like, we keep rolling off of that. I think that podcast idea is phenomenal, though. I mean, just thinking about the people that you know, network-wise... I think a lot of people obviously cast judgment instantly upon athletes, no matter what, just solely on how they play a game or what they do contract wise or what they do off the field wise. And a lot of times athletes just get the post game talk about what happened, but you don't know what they went through to, to get here. I mean, I just think off you the top of my anything. head, like, dude, like I think off the top of my head, AD, for example, like someone that's been your guy, like through and through with everything you've went through and stuff. And like, has been somebody that you literally said like oh, that guy would be at my wedding. He's an icon you know? of Pittsburgh. And it, and it's like I think people see him on the Rams. And he's like the best D tackle or best <laughs> nose guard like ever. But people don't see him whenever he was at Penn Hills at like five foot eight. Yeah, two hundred pounds and like was taken on like people didn't teams, see like, him dudes. until like it doesn't matter if you're an athlete, a, a successful businessman. It doesn't matter. I mean, somebody that I I want to shout out is like Wheels. Right. There's just so many cool people that have inspired me because I know the other side of their story. Like I saw where you grew up. I saw the gym you worked out like it's just and then the support that you've given me like, bro, I'm always going to be there. I'm always going to support you because when I learned the other side, I stopped complaining when I heard your story. I stopped worrying about sharing mine and just kept working because in a certain period of time, if people want to know, they'll ask. But people want to know, and when you're too big, they can't ask. So I want to be able to give a platform to people that want to learn. And there's a lot of people that you'd be surprised. I mean, I'm thankful right now that I'm able to share certain things with you guys. Like the platform to share and and not feel as though you're being judged for sharing. That's what I want to create a space where, man, listen, man, you don't want to put that on there, we'll cut it out. But I want you to be able to feel free and feel open, and I want to hear from people. I want people to come to me to say, yo, can we talk about this? Say, yeah, bro, absolutely, because I do understand. Because there's things that I want to share, and if the platform's not right, it's tough to open up. It's tough to be honest. Like, it's easy for me to be honest with you two because, truthfully, I respect you both. And I've watched you grow into what you are. So to be here, it's like an honor. It's like, fuck yeah. Like, I'll watch well, you thanks, guys go bro. from, nah, <laughs> like, take the roses. Like, yeah. it's I know it's hard sometimes because we live in a society where people are so unwilling to give the roses. But it's like, you're doing great. You're doing fucking great. And this is a small microcosm of your greatness. This is just that one thing you guys wanted to do, right? Like, you're doing great in something outside of this. You're doing great in something outside of this. And I pray that you do great in other things outside of this. But this one thing started here at the start with one little mic. Weren't you guys sitting outside or something? Like, I'm thinking of one outside. I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to think of the ones in the beginning. The beginning was at Westminster. Yeah, at Westminster. I just remember you guys sitting like a side of fire or something in the back. Yeah, that was with B. Yeah, that was with B. Okay, all right. Because I do. We got to rip another fire one, though. I'm not going to lie. After like episode six, I I didn't keep up. Yeah. I will never let you. That's all good. No worries. We get it. We get it. I'm just being honest. There's a lot to consume, man. Well, 38 episodes is a lot. Yeah. It's a start. And I lost my subscriptions. You know what I'm saying? So. Don't blame me. They could be yeah. too much. <laughs> they could be too much to At keep. At three ninety nine a month was you keep, waxing. Well, you keep. I I keep seeing like all these things too. It's like 
you're paying all these subscription costs. Do you guys get those ads? Yeah, I get something like well, that. Yeah, it's you hard really to keep do. track of it. Yeah, though. and like it is. That's like such a good business model though for businesses because like I mean that's literally the Planet Fitness business model uh-huh. is get people <laughs> signed up for nine nine cents at the beginning of the year. They go for a little bit, then they stop, and then they just keep paying because they just don't pay attention, and they make it tough for you to quit because you have to go in person to quit. Yep. Well, what's crazy, too, is if you ever go go to a Planet Fitness and just be like, I have a super strange question. How many people belong to this gym? Mm-hmm. And, like, the one we go to, listen, it was a food land. It was not large. But the numbers are, there's tens of thousands of people that pay yeah. nine ninety nine a month or more there. Wow. So I didn't know do, it was that many. I mean, it makes sense, though. Just the, the location think about of where the, it's at. Exactly. Because people will join specific gy- So, like, with Planet Fitness, their thing is when they open a new gym, that becomes your gym. Mm-hmm. And correct me if I'm wrong, but don't you have to cancel with the gym you signed up with? I think so, yeah. So, if you, like, move somewhere, you're still, like, your home gym is still, like, Back out there. It's It's... They make it as hard it's as possible. It's $10 a month. Like That's the thing. They're like $10 a month. Most people will be like, oh, I didn't go this month. I'll just let it slide or whatever. And the next thing you know, a year goes by. And they got 1,000 other people that are doing that. <laughs> the exact same it's thing. just that location. And then they got five locations in the city. And then 50 statewide, thousands throughout the whole. I mean, it adds up quick. Yep. So whenever like, like Crunch Fitness is opening up in Pleasant Hills. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're not paying me, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Give us when that you, membership, baby. When, we need the song. Dude, I really want to join there because it's like a nice version of what LA Fitness used to be. LA Fitness, fuck off. You're falling off. You don't take care of anything. Like They don't. You, dude, they've had the same equipment in the gym that I used to go to for 12, 13 years. And I feel like it's never clean in there either. It's never like clean. you go into the locker room, dude, and I feel like you're gonna get like a fungal a, infection, bro. Dude, hepatitis, <laughs> anything, dude. The way those old guys walk around in there, you're like, brother, <laughs> I'm so sorry. You gotta look at it. I don't want to. No, it's it's terrible. Like I, it's, oh man, dude. Plan. I was at Planet for a while, and then mine just started like cutting back the hours all of a sudden. I was yep. like. You're supposed to be 24 hours. Like, that's what you're advertising. Yeah. But it was like every time I come at like 7.30 on a weeknight, it's closed. I'm and, like, Oh, that's fuck. crazy. It was weird. Yeah, that's So I terrible. gave him a few weeks and it just never got better. I'm so out. I went to Snap. Snap's yeah. better. Is that Snap. 24-7 with a, a key card? Snap Fitness? Yeah. Yeah, 24-7 that's, with a key card. Yeah. yeah and it's nice. like all the Snap Fitnesses too. So it's like oh. any of them. Speaking of gyms and working out, the Planet Fitness gym culture might be the worst thing <laughs> or the best <laughs> on the Depends player's on perspective there is dude it, it it just like cracks me up man but just do you the, go in there with the perspective of a great workout or a entertaining workout oh that's a good point some days it's some days it's like all right i'm gonna get in here and get it done and then other days it's like all right i'm gonna take everything in today and i'm gonna laugh <laughs> like mean, today i'm gonna laugh <laughs> you see some wild stuff in there yeah Oh, any bro. any commonplace of an activity that challenges a person is gonna be comical. Like, it's all Josh. If me and me and Alex and my brother golfed with you, you're I hopefully gonna laugh at us in a in a friendly way. Like, oh, because you're a vet in comparison. So when we go to the gym, right? Like, did you play? Did you golf at Westminster? A little bit, yeah. Right. Like, athlete, athlete, athlete. So, Mm. no matter what sport you play, they're going to put you in the gym. So, you have somewhat of an understanding of what to do, how to do it, and why you're doing it. The average person is told by a doctor or a friend or a family member, like, hey, you should start taking care of yourself. So, they go in with no real direction. It's easy to laugh, right? But after I laugh, I'm like, fuck, I'm going to help this dude. Because, like, mm. you're here. You're doing something. A lot, like, it's the start thing, right? right? We're going to mm. go back to that. But a lot of times, people can't do that. So I never, that's. How do you approach someone in the gym? I was just going to, that's off the top of my head, like, if, to help them. <sighs> this is, this is going to come off, like, shallow. But with guys, they can kind of, like, bro, if, I, if I'm in the gym and I'm kind of a little pumped, it's like, yo, it's your approach. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. But if you pass the look test and say they're not in the same shape as you, they listen a little bit, or 
you know, like, bro, you go in the gym and you start throwing some weights around. They watch how you train. There's a level of like, oh, he kind of knows what he's doing. So if I watch somebody, I'm like, hey, you know, and bro, I have all those silly, silly the CES, PES, CPT. Like, I did all that. I trained people. I love it. So it's not as though, you know, I'm a, I'm a critic with no credentials. I have the credentials. But in addition, you're doing the hardest part. You're showing up. The least I can do is somebody who comes here every day, works out once or twice a day, is to say, hey, bro, like, if you need help, like, I got you. If you need a spot, come see me. Hey, if you keep doing that, like, you might hurt yourself or you might do something that takes you out of here. And that's a disservice to your effort to get here. So who am I to not at least try? If you don't want it, that's fine. If you say, fuck, okay, fuck me then. Like, I'm, mm -hmm. but I'm still... Listen, this is this stands on record, right? It's always, oh, well, it's never what if. And what I mean by that is I'd rather you say fuck off than me regret not trying, right? It. Mm -hmm. So in the gym, like, I'm going to just, hey, look, look, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to, you know. But you have to do it subtly. You can't be like, oh, bro, you're doing that. Like, no. <laughs> right. Like, you can't be that guy. That's weird. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, that's, that's where Planet Fitness does have it right with, like, their approach of trying to just get people in the gym and, yeah. like, make it as easy as yeah. possible to introduce But then they need to, to they need to, like, cultivate the next step. Yeah, they, they got to bridge the gap a little bit they other do, than just you get you in the like, door. They need, like, somebody on the floor, like, They don't help out. People. They don't help out whenever they get you in for the $10 membership, but then they got pizza nights on Tuesdays. Well, yeah. You know, like, DZ <laughs> loves that pizza. <laughs> hey, listen, hold on, hold on, hold on. We got to go back to my palms right now. So, <laughs> at, at the Planet Fitness is by his house they call him the mayor he is the mayor bro he, he's probably rolling in right now is it the plan bro like we should yeah, right <laughs> bro bro we should call him we should call him see what he's doing no nah, he ain't he, he i bet he's at planet he's fitness bro no i way. bet he's got to oh my sir he's going off i don't know what the hell no we got like we got probably 30 minutes it's like at nine o'clock so okay. my dad my dad had a tough life we'll put it that way this man is about his health but when i say his health he wears a a Fitbit or something. So, <laughs> go ahead. You want to tell this story? Go ahead. No, I'm not. It's probably not, no, funnier no, no, no. from you. No, no. I was just laughing at the Fitbit comment. You said he's about his health. He wears a Fitbit. No, so, <laughs> so he'll be like, you know, crushing a beer or something, and he'll be like this with his Fitbit, <laughs> like trying to get his steps in, right? So the fictitious yeah. nature of this bullshit of ten thousand steps a day, which, if anybody knows, again, I'm gonna butcher this, but it 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 has permeated from an old Japanese perspective if you walk 10,000 steps a day you're moving and they just picked a, a, a number right and that's carried over as like the you should walk 10,000 steps a day cool well for him it's like oh this thing he'll be like this he'll be he'll be sitting there like this I'm like go to the fucking gym or stand the fuck up and walk he'll be I got my steps in. No, you didn't. You moved your arm like this for an hour and a half while you're watching TV drinking wine. But again, it's it's everybody does what they're supposed to and back into lack of judgment. There's a part in everybody's life that they settle in and you don't know the other side. Oh, I'm, I'm plugging my podcast now and your podcast. There we go. <laughs> I'm just fucking there with we you. go. But what I'm saying is, is you don't know the other side. So, you know, like knowing my pops, obviously, I'm like, bro, look, I get it, man. Just die happy. Like, you're you're 72 years old. Like, at this point in the game, like, I, thank you. Like, you did everything I needed. Anything, like, more, how you live your life is yours. I'm not, I want you around. But it's tough to tell a grown man what he needs to do. And if someone wants to change, they're going to change on their own regard. Like, yeah. I can be like, Alex, you need to do this. And the more I tell you, the less likely you are to do it because it's, you know. Like, People get to a point where they're like, now I'm, now I'm not going to do it because you told me to do it. Boom. That's me. <laughs> I'm anti-authority yeah. as fuck. Like, I'm like, bro, shut up. Like, <laughs> now you're just annoying me and now no, I'm not going to do it. No, but it stems back to what we said. If I don't respect you, I'm not. I, no, look. I don't need to do this. You want me to do this, and I don't respect you. I don't need to do it. I'm not doing it. Mm -hmm. This is for you. It's not for me. This is not self-serving. If it doesn't benefit me, I'm not doing it. And there are certain things in life, like people within the parameters of structure, In like, me and you are probably more so in the same situation working for ourselves than you are. Mm -hmm. And when you, you have to understand what you're going into. You're moldable still. But I'm 35. I ain't listening to no 29, 30-year-old telling me. 
<laughs> no. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. No, I'm not right. doing that. That's great. You do it then. Right? But again, it's it's because I don't think you deserve where you are. It's like, I don't want to be where you are, but when you start telling me what I need to do with where I am, that's when the line's drawn. I don't respect you no more. Sorry. Mm-hmm. What's going on? Deer just... Oh, it's a dog. I thought oh. it was a deer. You oh. see that dog? I was like, oh, he <laughs> took off. I was like, what? He went over the hill. I was like, where are you going? Yeah, Yo, probably. We probably I got, got a. Uh, I got a good uh, closer. All right. Uh, what one thing makes you nostalgic? Makes me nostalgic? Yeah. Oh, like what? Like takes you back? Just makes you like. Yeah, it takes you back. Music. I I, mm. I was just gonna say off the top of my head, if you Music put a is seat, really good. Mine specifically though is if you put a CD into. A CD player, okay, like in the car. So the truck, the truck has a uh, CD. Is it player a thing it? or a, or an act though? Yeah, I don't know. Well, because yours what, is what still music. On? Could be both. It is still music, but I don't know. Well, I yours feel is like the, it's act the act of placing the CD. Well, That's and it's all and it's act. all on yeah, one. Yeah, it's know. all on one CD though. Like you're listening to all one musical artist like, on a, a CD. Tape. Yeah. No, not a mixtape, just oh, a CD. Just no, a he CD. got you. Nobody what, got the mixtape? I had a CD that was a... Uh, dude, what? I had, had everything Napster and LimeWire, bro. I had 12 oh, tracks that on that Yeah, thing. burning CDs, burning CDs. I'm talking right. about like like back you in the day when real you... real disc. Yeah, like so a real disc. So you want to go disc. back to vinyl. I mean, I don't have a vinyl player, so I got a CD player. But if you got a CD of just you're one... Just, you're just talking, put in the CD in the truck. like, And you're, you're listening to one artist, acts. one yeah, one artist, one album. I went a lot okay, broader. Yeah. I just said music. Well, because there's yeah, certain songs fair. and like certain things that you'll listen to, and it just immediately takes you back to like the first time you heard it. And that's why I said that. Like mm-hmm. the act of putting a CD in, I've done it so often True. that the act itself doesn't resonate, but the track I put on does, which is why I said music and not the act of playing it that is true that is true no right or wrong i mean that's the cool part of it yeah all right so here's the thing singular most nostalgic track of your life oh that thing you want to go back to like whether it's smiles tears laughs i don't care i have like kind of a i just remember like some of the black eyed peas like first songs in like sixth or fifth grade were like feels like the first time i remember like being alive Hearing really? music, you know what I mean. Like, Hearing music, I don't know. It's like hard to explain. I it's know like, my um, my perspective of feeling life, so I want to hear this. So it's just like there's like a certain point in life where you're just like, all right, like Going I'm through here, the like I'm here. Yeah. Like I remember, like I'm starting to figure out, like those what were some of your first is. memories of like you feeling moved. Yes, okay. like consciousness, yes. like you were. So like probably right around the time of when the iPod, iPod Touch started to become Crazy. very relevant damn you just aged and the fuck out of me so it ties yeah. into like that period when like black eyed peas like i think the song fireflies like by al city was really big Wiz khalifa oh, yeah. like black and yellow was black and yellow big Wiz. Right then. so hold on just so to like age me more time that kids were like bringing or my classmates were bringing like ipods and stuff what on year the that movement school. was crazy Had to be 2000 2008 maybe for me but that's what the first time I remember like going to the bus stop and like kids had AirPod like earpods in and we're listening to songs wow. and stuff. Earbuds. And I don't know, something about those songs just like automatically takes me back to that era. Do you think it has something to do with for the first time not for the first time, but the accessibility to music and telling our story or living more so our story with a soundtrack? Like, like, cause we hooped, mm-hmm. right? Alex, what was the, mm-hmm. n- not to take you off yours, I'm going to get oh, back no, to good. it, but mm-hmm. what was the one song you listened to hooping before every game? I'm trying to think. My side note, the, the trains thing is awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's so cool. <laughs> I, I've. All right. We'll get I back remember. To you. Think no, about this. I, no, I got one off the All top right. of my head. Um, I don't know why. But the beat to uh, "Rich as Fuck" by Lil Wayne, okay, bro, like that was it through senior year. All right, or wait, through, hold on. What through, was not the... through senior year, but through um, through like high school, the beginning parts of high school was like Bono, 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 Bono. <laughs> you know, I don't know. There's something to it. What's his What's his first lyric? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna just stop there. Hold on, hold on. I gotta go. I'm gonna Let's just hear. stop. I'm gonna just stop. What was there. yours? Like this was like 
Dynamite Ty Cruz. Okay. Oh, yeah. Wow. I feel like that's when I started to gain musical consciousness, too. Yeah. Like you start to remember well, lyrics. Start genres. To consciousness, consciousness. There weren't that many genres back then. Like It was were, music uh, just like that. Yeah. There mm-hmm. were like three or four artists per genre, and that was it. Like, anybody else, they didn't get on TRL or whatever MTV had or BET. Like, they weren't seen. And then, all of a sudden, probably, what was it? 2013 like social media really started to pop i think so yeah that was back in like the holistic instagram days when you posted something you're like follow my boy like he just downloaded instagram it's you so remember dope. like oh my gosh those were the days like when everybody was so genuine on instagram like i don't that, know that when snapchat <laughs> first came around yeah i don't remember add like, me, snap the add first me. part of like youtube when you'd like watch youtubers i had a friend <sighs> that worked a youtube early on when i say friend it was my cousin that was very very smart his mm-hmm. friend So, again, collectively, it was my friend. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But I have stories about that. Not acceptable for this podcast. Anyway, he worked at YouTube, and I remember I was was in high school, and it was probably 2007, and he was like, yeah, check this out. I was like, I I don't have time to watch this now. Right, literally, I was like, I don't have time to sit at a computer. Yeah. Now, think about how many people spend their time on YouTube. Or just on your, I mean, or now, just on your phone. Don't get me wrong. I won't say I'm not where I am because not because the University of YouTube. Everything that I have in a skill stems from my ability to dive into YouTube or a plethora of websites to gain information and adapt it to what I'm going through. But back then, I'll never forget that. I was like, I don't have time to sit on a computer. Now, I'll probably go home and you know research something on youtube whether it's in the new instagram algorithm or something like i'm gonna gain information from somebody that knows more than me and that's a great place to do it but that that like jump from i don't have time to this might be a top three thing for all people am i wrong on that assessment no where do you think no. youtube ranks what in terms of in platforms? terms of nah just more so if i was out there and asked a random person in a random place in a random setting if they knew YouTube. Like, do you really think people won't? I think at this point, almost everyone knows YouTube. Yeah. And it's then, so relevant yeah. now. Do you think that they use it in their life day to day? I think so. You see what I mean? Yeah. Outside of like an iPhone or you know a what? phone, like, mm-hmm. smartphone. My yeah, dad, YouTube's like, probably number my three. My parents aren't on like TikTok or anything like that, but like my dad, I'll catch him watching YouTube shorts. And Same I'm with like, Bobby. Oh, so now I see, you see what, and his Same will be Bobby. like some dude building a cabinet or something. <laughs> see? <laughs> or like grilling burgers. Bro, grill. my dad will get on YouTube and play music like just yeah. through YouTube. And I'm like, bro. We got the uh, music. We got the Apple Music family no, playing. He's like, nope. no, you got the live versions, and he's and right. it filters in. I'm like, yeah, I mean, it is better music, but like, he's like, nope. I'm gonna, and he he doesn't even have the YouTube app downloaded. He literally goes on on Safari and searches up YouTube and plays music. Are you trying to knock him through, for that? I'm not. I'm not trying because I respect that. that. I respect the hell out of it. It's gritty. Like, it's gritty. Like, he goes through the extra steps of the process. He's like, sure I don't want to be done. tracked. I'm just going to put this here. Yeah. It's going to stay here. Like, I love it. I think that's respectable. Oh, I don't know. Shit. Man, that Man. stuff is. Uh, are we wrapping up? I guess so. I think Probably. so. I think we're going to die. It's a good battery. So, yeah. So that's why. We're but good on it. We'll put a, uh, fire. a bow on this episode. Man, As always, so 39 from sun Thank to sunset. Thank you, Jay Z. Oh, bro! Like I said, it's a blessing. I'm proud of both of you. Like, it, I'd be very curious to see what I said in the other one about where you guys are because where you were in that one, whatever. I think you said episode three to episode 39. It's neat just looking at equipment, looking at conversation, just looking at you two and where you guys. I know a little bit more than other people that don't know you guys to the depths I do, but it's neat, man. It's it's a blessing. So thank you for having me. It means a lot. Thanks for thank coming you, on. We, we appreciate it. No, it's nothing to me. Fuck it. We'll do it again. <laughs> we, right. we need to, honestly. Some of the most insightful conversation we have is every time you're on. We get deep. <sighs> yeah, depth is nothing that I laugh. <laughs> so, no pun intended. All right, everybody. All right, everybody. Peace. 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 <laughs>